But anyway, welcome to the African Ancestral Wall. I'm Jerry, I'm from Los Angeles. Anybody from LA or West Coast? Y'all probably East Coast. No, Nobody from the West Coast? Uh, Atlanta, or New York. Most of us from the East Coast. Oh, so we are from Atlanta, yeah. So I spent a lot of time there too. That's where my uh, my mother's a 1950s Spelman grad. So you know, I spend time. You know, our roots are there in Georgia. So you know, everybody in Atlanta, in LA, you know, we talk to them long enough. We all from Louisiana, Texas, or Georgia. You know. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, um, I've been here 18 years. I've known Brother Bomani here for. From 2007, right? We met in Atlanta at one of the conference. Yeah, we met. No, I think actually we met through my mother. Yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, my mother was an activist in Atlanta, and uh, he got Bomani and a couple of other people. We went to Soul Veg. Remember, she brought you, and I. she said, oh, my son's in Africa, so, you know, that's how we started. Bomani visited me out here when there was nothing but bush as far as you can see. And in that was literally direction. 2008. I mean, there was nothing out here, so now... You Let me show imagine. people. The only thing that was here was that one house. Yeah, that one house back there. Right there. Lady. And that's 2008. And, and me. And that was it. And then he had all of this lot right here. So I'm telling people, yeah. if you build little by little, you can build a whole empire. Yeah. Well, if that's what you want to do. <laughs> <laughs> but if your nerves can take it, you know. I mean, these building, building in Ghana is uh, more than an ocean, I tell you. It's, it's, it's really something. But, you know, got to keep, keep pushing. So anyway, um, I basically came to Africa in the early 90s uh, first. I've been all around West Africa. I haven't been in South or East. Actually, I thought I was going to do a lot of that traveling, but, you know, got here, had a couple of children, and next thing you know, I was doing good. If I could just get back to the U.S. every now and then to see my people, much less travel all around Africa. But it's okay. I mean, and um, I think for me, living in the U.S., um, you know, I mean, by all standards, I guess I was doing pretty good. You know, I was working in aerospace and, you know, had my own little stuff in L.A. It's cool, I mean. But, um, you know, I was raised, my mother was an activist. You know, we were raised in that kind of environment, uh, which was about race first, you know, bringing up African people, black people. And, and over time, I started reading Garvey, you know, like in my early 20s. and. And uh, of course, getting into Asa Hilliard and Sheikh Ante Jaff and African civilizations and trying to integrate that into my kind of black power orientation that I was raised with. And it, as I got in my late 20s, it kind of started becoming more clear to me that uh, what Garvey said was probably right, which is until you have something of consequence on the African continent as a people, you're always going to be slapped around anywhere else in the world you are, and I think that's what we're seeing. So when we see, whether it's a George Floyd thing, or whether it's, we were just talking about gentrification, or whether, anything that they decide to do any way they decide to do it, they take your history out of the school books, uh, gerrymander the thing so you can't half vote, you know, whatever they want to do, I mean, there's no one to intervene on our behalf, you know? I mean, you can't just treat Chinese and Indians any kind of way in America, you know, because then they're going to start treating you kind of bad in Hong Kong, or, you know, or start, uh, you know, doing all the things that people with some reasonable power can do mm -hmm. as leverage to support and protect their own people globally. Well, we didn't have that, and we don't have that. Mm -hmm. And um, so it became clear to me that we're going to have to start building on the continent if we're ever going to be able to have protection opportunities for the race globally. So as much as I love Los Angeles and as hot as my jacuzzi was <laughs> and my pool, I still had to get up out of there to see if we can get something else done. So um, yeah, and that's what we're trying to do now. And, and, and personally, you know, I started out kind of you know how you have the people who have their, all of their books and their, all of their videotapes and you know, we're just ready with all of that stuff, you know, African centered everything. And when I, so when I first moved here in 2004, um, in, actually in the 2003, I was going to the universities and going around with all of this stuff and you know, I think I'm going to be Johnny Appleseed, you know, 44 years old. But I realized that, um, 
you know, by the time you get to the college age students, or even late high school for that many, uh, 15 on up, you know, this is a system that so glorifies the West, mm -hmm. so glorifies America and London and everything that, you know, you just, the children are just caught up in that. And that is where their hearts have gone. And that's where they want to be. They want to get out. It's even worse now, actually. Uh, so you got all these college students and they'll come and listen to you, but then at the end of your talk or your, your documentary you're showing them, whatever, you know, they'll pull you over in the corner and ask, you know, hey, can I get some help and maybe write me a letter to someone that can help sponsor? You know, that would be the interest of a lot of them, not all of them. You know, because at that age, I don't want to say they've given up, it's just that they are so convinced that everything outside is so much better than everything inside that it's really hard to penetrate. They'll hear you, but they won't feel you. You know what I mean? They understand intellectually what you're saying, but from a visceral sense, they've already felt like, you know, there's a better option out away from Africa. Or even internal to Africa, they're still thinking of, you know, how can I get the hookup, you know? And even that hookup ultimately, in their minds, affords them an opportunity to quote unquote travel. So it's a, it's a, it's a deep thing we're working with. And if you then, so I started going younger and younger to see if I could um, maybe have some impact on younger students. And I've been to lots of schools out here, Accra, Tema. Um, and I can tell you that it's much better because the younger students, you know, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, you know, they, they tasted the Kool Aid, but they haven't swallowed it and they haven't bathed in it. You know, they just taste it. So you can at least talk to them about, you know, the, our potential as a, as a people, as an African people, and, and they'll be getting it. So I was going to a lot of the schools, but what happened, there was so much, so many schools, logistically almost impossible to, to just keep anything reasonable going. Uh, so then I had the idea in 2017, so this has been going on for a while, to uh, build this wall. and. That way I can just bring the students in on field trips, you know, and uh, there's some built-in motivation among the teachers and the principals, you know, because they got to get them together, they got to bring them here. So, you know, it's a little bit better than me going to the school half of the time there, you know, it's noisy and all of that, half interested. So that way there's some motivation already built in when the people get here. And certainly the teachers and the principals are like, no, we, we don't spend this fuel and I yell, Pay attention, you know. And usually the ones who bring them are a little bit more what we might call conscious or a little bit more, you know, into, you know, interested in what we're talking about. So that's worked well. We've had, every year we have a program in November. We just had it this past November where it's celebration of the ancestors where the students really show, you know, a lot of what they learn and what they can do and take on the personalities of people on the wall and that kind of thing. So. So that's working. So what we're doing now is if you look out there, you see we're, we'll see it when we go down. I'm working on another big building here. Been working on that since 2018, you know, 2019. COVID, you know, things got real tight. We're, we're, and, and you all will all get a chance somewhere along the line if you want to take the number, donate, cash app, whatever you want to do. Maybe I should give it to you. Uh, but what we're trying to do that, we're doing a library on the first floor. We're doing a multi-purpose uh, uh, floor in the middle there. And then maybe a little residential at the top, but that's something, but that's a private thing. But those two levels, that way we can bring the students in on the weekends, we can bring them the community in during the week. And I'm sure a lot of you have had places where in New York or, or Atlanta where, you know, you, you go on a you know you can go to that place and get something good for the soul, you know. Mm -hmm. So like in L.A. we had Talking Drum on Friday night. We just go there because we know something good, mm -hmm. some African was going to be going on. And we, you know, you don't know who you're going to meet, who's going to show up. Sometimes it'll be someone like a John Henry Clark, you know, you know, stop by somebody, hopefully, you know, just different people or bang up from Congo. You just don't know who's organizing what and whether they'll stop through. So this is the kind of thing that we want to be able to have here, where anytime you, even when you come, if just you just come sit down, I'll have somebody that can at least run some documentary films for you, just so you can sit with your family 
and it, and, and it won't cost anything other than whatever they want to donate. So that's what we're trying to kind of operationalize the thing. We have a lot of other little projects uh, are going to, which is trying to propagate um, our stories and our, our materials to different languages so other people can start getting things in their own language. Right now, the only thing they've translated into all of the languages is the Bible, right? So, you know, whatever, whatever ethnic group you are in Africa, no matter how small, somebody has translated the Bible into that language, you know, which is, you know, I mean, we say whatever you want, why they do, what their motivations is, but it's effective. And so the question is, if we take something that we think is our seminal work, um, destruction of black civilizations or, you know, whatever kind of books we have, then why shouldn't they be able to read that book, you know, in Zulu or in Tri or in uh, Ewe or whatever. I mean, now, you know, these are huge tasks, but we have to order them, prioritize them, and start getting these things done, especially for the children. So that's the, the kind of the thrust we've been pushing on too, especially given that we have access to the local youngsters. So that's that's that. So anyway, um, we're always getting good ideas and good energy from people who come around, and so many people have so many projects going on in the U.S. Yeah. And 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 I'm not saying anything like these projects that you're doing in the U.S. are not useful. Of course they are. Only thing that I try to um, uh, advocate is to the extent possible, you know, begin to point them a little more toward uh, Africa and a little more toward not just the Kente cloth Africa, but orient them to thinking about what is it that they could actually do or connect with on the ground here that may help build this thing that, that, that we're talking about that would lend, uh, you know, some clout to the race. So that's kind of what, what we're doing and um, we're going to keep doing it. It was beautiful, can't, can't Jerry. Can't do it no more. It's kind of like the, you made this, uh, you know, this this compound, an uh, educational center. Yeah. You know, we, you know, connecting Africans in the continent and Africans in the diaspora. Yeah, and it was and never done for tourism, by the way. I mean, I'm happy that y'all here, you know, <laughs> but I mean, you know, it was just really, this was just like, I'm thinking, how do we get these students in here at a, at a clip? And then my wife had already put a restaurant here, so, you know, it helps. That helps, too. Like, y'all eat the buffet, you know, that's helpful. So that's <laughs> and then they also have um, lodging under the, oh, under the restaurant. Lodging. Yeah, we've got some lodging, too, down there. So this is where you can literally just do it land. And this is, uh, I want to say this with uh, eight plots, uh, two acres. This is 10 plots. Yeah, so about a yeah. little bit over two acres. Yeah, two and a half, yeah. So uh, any, if anyone has any questions or uh, observations, by the way, I was telling them, I took my children, because they're on my case, to see uh, Black Panther number two. Mm -hmm. what is it? Hopefully, you took your do hopefully you took your daughter, not your son. Well, Wakanda. Wakanda. Oh, no, it's right. called Wakanda Forever. Wakanda but Forever. So you took your daughter, not your son, right? Well, yeah, I was, you know, I, I had, you know, and I mean, most of the groups that come here are primarily women. You know, there'll be a brother here and a brother there. It's always 70% women. When I say Wakanda forever, they all cheer. When I say Woman King, they all cheer. Yes. But I'm still watching these movies, and I'm like, uh, okay, I haven't seen Woman King, but I mean, I watched this whole thing yesterday, and I said, well, I guess the brother's just obsolete. Yeah, they, 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 the mean, brothers got castrated in uh, Wakanda we're, forever. We're, we're, I mean, we're just not part of the future. If you let Hollywood tell the story. They have one big brother who was, you know, in the, in the tribe, you know, and he was like support, and then for some reason they they're fighting Latinos. That's a cool, or Indians. I'm like, where the hell they come from? You know, I, I thought this was a. No, was then, like, and then the one Latino dude who's the top guy. I mean, he hit the brother boom one time. That was it. He just was going, uh, I said, so one brother with a little bit of grip. They just knocked him, slapped him off right quick. And everybody else was a sister. I'm not saying sisters can't do, it, but I mean, you know, come on now, wait a minute. And that's, that's Hollywood, but that's Hollywood. Yeah, absolutely. So that's why, you know, but that's Hollywood. That's our brothers have to yeah. just take leadership on doing certain things. Yeah, that's yeah. Hollywood. And then the sisters, I think, 
you know, and I, it's they, they put the energy here. to get those movies made. No, I think, I think from, you know, y'all can correct me. I know this is a touchy thing, but I think what happens is you look at the, uh, this landscape in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm just always appalled at, you know, the, the condition of the brothers in the U.S., you know, in terms of just, you know, being in the, you know, just being stable. It's been like that, and it seems to be getting worse. So mm -hmm. I can see from a woman's standpoint, it's like got to be frustrating to see your, not just for yourself, but your daughters and even your sons getting, you know, marginalized in this system and then trying to figure out what you're going to do with your daughters, if not yourself, you know, in terms of stable relationships. And so I think that that dynamic, which of course is also orchestrated by them, mm -hmm. you know, that's the grabbing the five-year-old boys and putting them on that track, mm -hmm. you know, we know how they're going to end up. So they orchestrated the dynamic and then, but women, you know, we're all, only human. So, you know, you're dealing with a situation where, you know, there's this shortage or there's this, you know, this whole imbalance thing going on. And then they come with the movie saying, don't worry about it. You don't need them. Yeah. You know, and that, and, and even if you're conscious, I think that's still going to resonate to a lot of people. And I'm, and I'm just asking folks to just look at that deep and don't forget who's orchestrated this disaster. And, uh, and, and so they're going to be lying, women king, this king, that king, and brothers going to be pipsqueaks for the next 10 years or 20 years in Hollywood. And, um, but they don't have nothing good for you. They ain't got nothing in store for you good. They ain't, they ain't, they ain't gonna give you nothing. You know, so. And it's just like in Africa here, you know, I mean, you can look at the brothers and all of these pathologies, all of these things, just like we can be here in Africa, we can say all of these things that are wrong. And I tell black folks all the time, you look at everything that you see wrong in Africa, whether it's uh, infrastructure, whether it's uh, corruption, whether it's whatever it is, you can criticize it all you want, but that's all you got. And people say, no, I got this, and I got some land over there. No, no. That's all you got. At the end of the day, it's team on team, nation on nation. You don't have it, they do, and that one don't belong to you. I don't care how much taxes you pay and how much blood you shed, they do what they want without mm -hmm. consulting you. You got a damn thing to say about it. Mm -hmm. That don't mean it's right, that just means it is. Mm -hmm. Right, so this continent, whatever you see, and you turn up your nose, and you say, well, whatever state it's in, we better get it together, because ain't nobody else coming to the rescue. Mm -hmm. All we got is us. All we got is us. And you know, you got people saying they're gonna legislate on your behalf, and you know, people out there, hey, these people, no. Yeah, yeah, they, they, they Why would they do that? A bunch of them got um, new positions in government, uh, so I want to see what they're going to do. But anyway, I'm, I'm, Next I year. digress, as they say. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, we have to get serious. So when I look at the, the situation with our men and our women, and it's, you know, I got a daughter, she's 24, my sister, you know, I mean, I see what's going on. It's like, you know, we're just, you know, it's like the, the old blues song, we just born under a bad sign, you know what I mean? But we got to... We gotta work it out. We gotta work that's it. it. We gotta fight it out somehow. I don't know. But that's what we've been doing, Jerry. You know, even yeah. you and I, we working together with other people. We've been sticking together and looking out for each other and growing together. Yeah. We so gotta fight it just out. like our people over there, One Africa. You know, we're all working together. Yeah. So, so there it is. I mean, that's. I know I got off track from the ancestral wall, but it's all part of the whole. You know, we 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 have to do what we can do because. Nobody else is going to give us nothing. And if we don't take time, by the time we wake up to get what we're supposed to get here, you're going to be having to speak Mandarin Chinese to get it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, time is of the essence, as they say. And uh, it's no time for playing. And uh, it's not that you're going to be anti-Chinese. That's not it. They're just taking advantage of what they see as a weakness. Mm -hmm. Indians yes. are just taking advantage of what they see as an opening. You know, you got unprotected nations and whatever, we just come, come take what we can get. So that's a whole nother discussion, how I, we reorganize ourselves on the African continent to have enough strength to be able to resist all of this. And like I said, that's a whole nother discussion, but we better do something because if that doesn't belong to you, 
and they're going to give you movies to make you think that, you know, some of you have a better chance than other of you, and that's going to work for a while till they get you totally disintegrated, mm -hmm. and that little crumb they gave you, they're going to take that. Mm -hmm. And everybody's going to be subordinated, and the brothers that you need to fight for you, you're going to have been propagate, propagandized out of the system. Mm -hmm. And if you buy into it, you, you're... And it's not that you're buying into it. You know these things, but we're all human. I mean, all, I, I try to put myself in that situation. And it's like, it's, it's, a bad, it's a bad situation to be in. We just got to, we're in, a, we're in a hell of a fix. But we have millions of acres, millions of square miles of land that the Chinese don't own, that the Asians, that the Indians don't own, that the Americans don't. We got a lot in Africa that still, at least ostensibly, belongs to us. The question is, are we going to put the energy in it? Or are we going to just say, wow, everybody's corrupt, it looks too bad, I'm tired of these potholes. So I always say, you know, people say, well, how do you deal with all of this stuff? I say, you know, if, you, if you're looking at, you got a certain mission, then all of these potholes and this corruption, it, it, it's not a big deal. It's a, it's a pain in that. You know what? Hey, no doubt about it, wish it wasn't there. But you know, relative to what it is we got to do, these are just bumps in the road. Yeah. It's just like you look at some of the white missionaries, you know, mm -hmm. who've come to all of these so-called third world countries. And they had die of malaria out in the bush somewhere. And you say, well, you know, guy could have been in, you know, West Haven, Connecticut, kicking, you know, wherever he's from. And that, but, but they have a mission. They have a mission. Yeah. You know, now whether you agree or don't agree with the mission, that's your business. But they have a mission. And, they're, and all of these hardships, quote unquote, pale in comparison to their mission. Mm -hmm. So they deal with it. And all these hardships have to pale in comparison to our mission because these are our grandchildren and their grandchildren who are counting on us to make this thing work. They're not going to look kindly back when we threw our hands up because, you know, things was hard. That's not going to work. So we got to, it's a sacred obligation to make this thing happen for us. Our grandchildren. And, and by the way, it's not like, you know, brother's suffering now. You know, that's another thing. It's not like you're just going to come and, you know, live in a ditch somewhere. I mean, if you organize yourself, uh, you're going to have good feelings. You're going to have good places to live. You're going to have, it's going to be good. But you just have to be ready for things that are dysfunctional and figure out how to start making functional. We can do it. And our children can do it. And they're expecting us to prepare them to do it. And that's our job. So I'll leave you with that. The perfect, sir. There you go, family. We're building for the future generations. That's it. Any, anybody have anything to say? And, yeah, yeah. Share, share with our good brother. 18, 18 years. Yeah, well. And he's one of many of our people who have been here for over a decade. And a lot of people are coming. I meet people now that have been here seven or eight years. The first time I met them, like, you've been here that long? So a lot of, you know, that means after so, the 18 years, what, what's your major frustration? What, what would you say? Made you say, should I have done it? And at what stage did you have those kinds of things? I never had those kinds of things. I've had frustrations, but I never had a question of, should I have done it? And like in terms of investment capital to come in, like how much, you know, what you're talking about in order to get even started? Because at the conference, Last night, I get the feeling that, you know, there's a minimum sum of money that you have to be thinking of in order to break the ice. Well, you know, that's an interesting thing, you know. I mean, I hear all of these huge numbers. They talk about, the, you know, to start a business, you need all the, I don't know, in Bomani's probably more current on that than I am. Since yeah, the figures are ridiculous, it. but I tell people, but you know. People we just come here. You can still do business without those thing. figures. Yes, you think. Because it, it has not stopped any of us. Because ain't nobody 50,000, all these things. Ain't nobody bringing that kind of money. It's, 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 like, a, kind it's of like a wish list that, you know, no. the government wants uh, people from the diaspora to come in with uh, half a million dollars, whether it's in cash. Is that what they're saying? Half a million? Half a million you know. cash or some level of investment. Look, you go down and It's like an encouragement, but even if you don't have that, you can still get into business and start from the ground up. You, you go talk to one of these Indians and one of these one of these Lebanese and one of these Bangladeshis or something, then they bring a half a million dollars to start that thing. Ain't no way in hell. So I don't know what you're talking about. You know, so don't let That's all that be. That's what I say it's a wish list. A, don't let that be. I'm not, you know, I don't want to be on camera saying that the government doesn't really whatever. But I'm just saying, come on now. All of these people, I just bought some doors from some guy down here. 
they're, they're they looking for. Bring they, no half a million dollars. Exactly, they're just looking for a higher level of investment, but you, you know, on, but no one is saying but that. There is a lesson there, though, which is, if you let's say you are a guy from India, right, and you want to start something, they got a school down here, huge school, everybody's going to it. And I'm resist, you know, I'm not doing it. But then you look at some of these things, and you realize that some of these governments have have subsidized or guaranteed or made other, you know, um, you know, compensatory deals, you know, with the government and the so-called big people here to get their people in. So it's not this this individual entrepreneur, you know, from China with an idea or India with an idea. It's, you know, it's they, they come in with the team. Say group See, economics. We don't have that team because there's nobody, you know, in the U.S. is going to say, okay, you know, y'all go in there. If they send black folks in here to do something, it's going to be for their benefit, not yours. You know, you might get a little something. But you know what I'm saying? So, unfortunately, we don't have that kind of backing, you know, governmental type thing who will make other deals to make sure this and this and the other get through, get established, and get funded. You know, so in our case, it really is whatever we can do together. Uh, not on your own, if, on your own if you can, together if you can. But it's not going to be as easy as it is maybe for somebody else. And that's what I'm talking about. But imagine later on where we have at least one nation of consequence of power, then they can begin to make those projections. Say, you know what? We have some people coming and they want to start doing some farming and whatever. No, they don't have half a million, but you know, we've got all these other deals in place. Put them in there and they'll be there. And if you don't, in the absence of that, it's every man for himself. So we got, we're, we're at a disadvantage. I'm not going to tell anybody any lies, but it's just a matter of mission and determination. And uh, after all, we're African people. We started this game, right? So that's what I'm saying. We have to we get. We can't let all our offspring, you know, outrun us. Yeah, that's why we got to get full-fledged corporate economics and just work it. So anyway, so sister, I don't think I, I don't know if I answered your question. There was no point where I felt that level of frustration because my desire to see something so you different. Came in working a regular nine-to-five. No, no, no. I mean, I mean, I sold my house. Oh, you had some kind of you know, and 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 just started with that, and you know, so no, you you can't come broke. Right. I'm but, not, not, no. but you can't go anywhere broke. Right. You can't stay home broke. No, but I'm saying I just think if you're like a professional and you chose to come to start to work, and then you. No, it's hard to come here. If you come in here trying to find a job, you're gonna be in trouble because the people here can't find jobs. Mm -hmm. You know, and the jobs they find don't pay much. So it's not, you, you know, people get these international jobs, you know, maybe with some NGO or something, but, you know, that's not, that's not the best way to try to come in, you know, on the, you know, with some European or American com company paying for it, because how long is that going to last? They got you there for a reason, so that's not very stable. So. I had a question. Just, so, because, um, I mean, I've always wanted to invest here. And I have my own business in the States, so is it like better to have like something going on that's make like a cash cow in the States and you come and not really come in to say I'm going to go have a job or anything like that, but have enough where you can start investing, build your house and the cash cow is... Yeah, is ideally, if, if, you are, if you have some investment in the U.S. that can't produce some, some substance mm -hmm. to help you survive. I mean, that's obviously always better because then you can start small, but you know your basic stuff is covered, and then you can start building up. And there's another good reason to start that way if you can. You have to learn what's going on. I mean, because people who come in with large sums of money have no idea what's going on. And they were successful in business in the U.S. and other places, so they were highly confident in their ability. But then, you, you know, they see you coming with all that confidence. You got another confident one? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And they lay it on you heavy. And then when you get, and sometimes you can't recover from that first hit. So it's so I advise anyone when they come in, even if you have big ideas, start small, do a build few it up. Things, yes. Learn how it goes. Learn this thing before you you bring in more. But if you have some little cash flow. You know, you can start building up, and soon you'll see, you'll see where to go and how to start building something that will sustain. 
you mentioned, you mentioned having conversations about organizing just as those who wanted to come back. So are you having those conversations and are they online for us to participate out, like off of this, outside of this, or how does that work? Um, that's a good question. I mean, you always have a meetings there. You always yeah, have a meetings there. Every, you know, I, well, I know what you're saying, but put it this way: there's there's initiatives that I think all of us can participate in. You know, uh, for instance, um, there's no excuse for with all of these PhDs in education, EDD. You know, we got African people specialists in curriculum from to Jamaica to Jamaica, <laughs> Jamaica to Jamaica Queens. To, LA to, you know, and we don't have a black curriculum, then I can just say, look, here's six books, you know, even if it's only history, grade one through six or eight, and say, look, here's something that you can use. You know, we need these kind of products. We need these kind of things. And, and it can't always be, how am I going to make a bunch of money on it? Because, you know, you're trying to put something out there that people need even more than they want, you know what I mean? But that's normal, they, they always giving us something we don't want, right? But they think we need it, so we get it. And before they know it, we've internalized this stuff. So, so I think, kind of back to the question, it's really more of, um, you know, um, the kind of conversations that we have, uh, That's a, that's a good question. I mean, it's kind of open, but... I would say I know now that the U.S. government is doing, they've created agencies to try to do investment and in, for Africans or for people, U.S. people who want to do work in Africa, mm -hmm. right? But I think the key is, it's one thing to come over, like you said, I come over with confidence, I'm, I do great business in the U.S. and I'm going to do great over here, and you kind of bring your ideology over here, right? It's just another essentially you create another form of justification. But it's important to find out and have that conversation of what 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 does the community need here. And if we're not having those conversations and we don't know, then we can't we can't use the tools that we have in a, in the US to kind of then direct that. And so that's I guess part of you know what I would be interested in hearing and learning. What are what are the needs? What are the what are some of the wants? What does the community need? Like you said, the education is not everything. If you can get it subsidized through other programs, or if you can whatever you know. So I think it's conversations um, to be more yeah. be able to direct those resources. Okay, I hear you. That's, that's a, a very good question, really, because um, you know basically you're talking about organization, too, correct? You know, which is like okay. What are the organizations that are trying to, you know, send things in the direction that we want? Um, well, you know, that's something we're, we're not kind of like in the U.S. as organized as we need, should be. You know what I mean? We, we have the same kind of... Uh, they, they will pay for this trip. There are funds, funds out here where they will pay up to like $2,500 for us to take this trip. But nobody... No, that's not widely known, mm -hmm. right? So, like, those are common. But when we talk about what, how do we get more people here? How do we how well, do we generally, bring more people to this education? Those are things that yeah, you know. Yeah, generally, um, as you know, when, when when they provide money, they mm -hmm. have a reason. Oh yeah. They have their agenda for you know. So huh? they will provide certain structures, you know. So. So people are saying, well, how can we use those resources for some alternative structures Correct. and do it that way? Correct. Um, but I think that's a that's, conversation we need to have yeah, internally yeah, yeah, so then we can be yeah. more succinct going back into yeah. the yeah. Mm -hmm. I think there's some things we can talk about, you know, everything that can be on YouTube. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. On a more personal level, what do you do for energy? How dependent are you on the, the public electricity? Um, well, are you utilizing solar? Actually, I'm not, but I should be. I just wasn't one of the ones who kind of had the, I don't know, 
should have had more vision or whatever. But there's a lot of people, there's, there's a lot of people that have, you know, when I kind of came, some of the people who started solar weren't really having that good results. But now the technology has it's really, a lot really better. gone far ahead. And so I think um, even uh, this building here, I was just talking to someone about making some provisions for some solar. But you know, so it's a combination, you know, the electricity grid from Ghana, ECG, uh, solar, a lot of people are having solar, and then a lot of generators, you know, too, for, for backup. And so like here, I have some generators, small generators for backup just for, you know, when people are staying, I have the basic, to keep the basic amenities going. moving off the grid one day? I do, I do, I do. And there's people who are doing it, and um, yeah, I, I we'll, we'll talk to about a few of them, because I don't know, there's people who are doing things, I don't know if they want me on here talking about them, but, but when we're done, we can talk about it. A few people that I know are trying to build independent type uh, places that are off the grid and teaching other people how to do it. So there's, there are people who are organized that way, I, I know and it's good. Parts of, uh, um, South Florida, Key West, for instance, uh, significant communities that are totally off the grid, uh, working with your solar energy. Yeah, yeah. It works. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think um, definitely things are going in that direction. They have to. You know, I mean, this whole energy, you know, <laughs> problem across the world is going to have to be dealt with. Unfortunately, in a lot of cases, um, the answer to a lot of the energy questions uh, actually impact Africa uh, in the bad adversely too. So for instance, you know, a lot of the materials that they need to build a lot of these energy efficient, whether it's a lithium or something you need for the batteries, or whether it's different, different types of uh, materials, you know, um, Africa and other non-Western places end up being exploited in a different way and still being polluted and still being, you know, whatever, to get these so-called clean energy uh, components and things out too. So, you know, it's, it's, it's rough all the way around. But we can... Uh, with this wind around here, where are the windmills? Are they actually, are they doing any windmills here in Africa? There's just some, you know, once again, it's a kind of some individual things here and there, someone will be trying to take care of it. But from our standpoint, and that's something, you know, because um, we should, like when we're coming in, you know, that's, especially now, like when we're talking about the efficiencies, we should have ourselves organized and tell people, if you come in, go down here and such and such, he's doing wind. Brother down here is now doing solar. And, and there are people who are doing that. I mean, I don't have them on the tip of my tongue, but there are people who are, are doing it. But it's not widespread, and it's certainly not being done systematically by the government or by private private. What do you want your legacy to be for this place and for you? Well, for me, I mean, I'm just brother trying to do this part. A, a tourism and educational center as far for as people. Place, as far as the place, I want, um, you know, I want as years to go by, I want it to be a place you know you can always come and get something good. I mean, I want it to be where, you know, I, I like the place 20, 30 years from now be known to have produced and exposed, I mean, literally hundreds of thousands of youngsters to things they would not have been exposed to before, you know. And you can see it, you know, I mean, you can just see it on the small ones, you know. And just one trip down the wall, you know, they, they're like, they're, they're a little bit, they're a little bit different, you know. They change a little bit, and I see them later, and, you know, they're waving, and now they're getting older, you know. And so these things, you know, you'd be surprised. A little bit of truth goes a long way, you know, because what they're getting in schools, you know, for instance, my daughter's 11. I mean, just some months back earlier this school year, you know, one of the things that's standard here in Ghana, and, and the Ghanaians here may be able to, to verify this, it's like, um, you 
list the 20 advantages of being colonized, of colonialism, right? And it'll be, you know, the English language, and we learn religion, and, you know, got, you know, we got rid of pagan, you know, pushed back paganism, and, you know, learned all of the, you know, you know all of this stuff, and that's today. And you're looking at this, and, and you better get those right if you want that A. That's now. So, you know, you ask me what are the benefits of colonialism, it's like zero, you know. And then they'll have something else that's kind of like to offset it, what are some of the, you know, not so good things. But it'd just be something real superficial. But, I mean, it's clear looking at the two lists that, thank God, you know, the, the British or the whites came. And this is what our children are raised with from small. You know, and so anything we can do to offset that or hopefully replace it at some level, you know, I think is good because the children kind of know something's wrong about that. And then when they hear a little something different, they go, okay, now that makes sense. So you don't have to have as big a megaphone as the liars do. But you do have to at least have something to counter that big lie. Because the big lie won't really make sense to them if that's all they got, then that's what they'll go with. So, you know, I, as far as the legacy, you know, what I would love to see, and people don't always believe this, I'd love to see an African ancestry wall in every region of Ghana. I'd like to see African ancestry walls all across the continent. I'd like to see ancestry walls that go to the border of one country and stop and start again on the other side so the children can get there and see the wall stops here and then right over there it continues and then someone tells them you got to go way down here to get a visa and pay some money and all of that just to cross that border to come back up here and finish looking you know so they see how absurd the whole thing is in terms of how the lines were drawn and you know hey you know what my, that's my cousin right over there and I you know I mean I'd like to see the wall using these kind of walls using a lot of places you could Go in an area, say for instance, Bogatenga in the north, where my wife and, and those are from. And you know, maybe, you, let's say you had a wall with 100 people. 50 of them can be local heroes. Local, you know, women and men who have done different things. And then the other 50 may be the, the kind of more global type thing. You know, I mean, we can do so many things with them. And then make it compulsory for your children to have one field trip, at least in a certain grade, you gotta go through you know, get that orientation. I mean, there's all kind of things. All of these things could really, really uh, help a lot, you know. So, if it's a legacy of uh, maybe doing it once and it's a model and then I see it be repeated, I personally have some other things I want to work on, so I, I can't go try to repeat the walls in other areas. But I, I'd love to see people copy it. Someone says, oh, someone put up some things they're trying to copy your wall. I'm just like, thank God. I hope they Absolutely. I hope they can do it, you know, and I hope they can propagate it. You know, don't worry about copying. I'm not you won't see me in court. <laughs> Inspire the nation, but I'll also like, do it. How many acres of okay, on well, time. Okay, well uh, this is like he was saying about two and a half. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he said, is that what time is that going on twelve? eleven fifteen. 11.15, so yeah, we can break and uh, hit that wall. And uh, I know if y'all get hot about halfway through, we'll just break again. Oh, absolutely, let's do this. So fam, we're about to so take everyone down to see the wall. Y'all can the ask journey continues. Yeah, I want to Going down the 